even after they become believers, they are so self-occupied. Whether they feel worthy to talk to God that day, whether they feel like God would answer their prayers because oh, they, had, they had some bad news about, some bad prognosis about their physical condition and they think that today I'm not in the flow because I've not been reading my Bible. They always think about themselves. What they do, whether they behave badly or good, it's not a matter of you, my friend. It's a matter of your lamb. So when you bring your lamb to God, what is that? You're reminding the father of his son, the son that he loved. Jesus said this, Therefore doth my father love me, because I lay down my life. You see, the father always loved the son. Even before he came to earth, the father loves the son. In the book of Proverbs, I was daily his delight before creation. And yet, God so loved you that He gave you His only begotten Son. What are we that God will love us and give up His Son? Not an angel, not a uh, Gabriel or a Michael, the archangel, but His Son, the Son that He loves for you. Amen? For me. Wow. God loves you. So when you bring His Son, it thrills God's heart. God doesn't look at the offerer anymore. God looks at His Son. And then the offerer does something in front of the priest. He lays His hands on His lamb. Laying your hands is identification. In other words, do not from now on see me as me in all my ugliness, in all my sins, see me in this lamb. So every time you put your trust in Jesus, my friend, you see, friend, I'm preaching the gospel again. Amen? Because we, we live every day on the gospel. And the reason we do communion is to, re God, Jesus says, remember me. He wants to be remembered. Especially in the aspect of His dying love for you. He wants to be remembered often. You see, you bring the Lamb before the Father and you identify yourself with the Lamb. And that's what many of you have done when you put your trust in Christ. And from this, from this moment that you put your trust in Christ, from that moment, God never sees you in you anymore. As far as God is concerned, that old man is gone. God sees you in all the glories, in all the acceptance, in all the favour and the pleasure of His Son that His Son has with Him. Amen. As He is, so are we in this world. Just like God looks at all of us, no matter how good we try to become, we are condemned not because of our sins, but because of Adam's sin. And then condemn, secondarily, for the sins that we do. But the reason we sin is because of that sin nature that came from Adam. So God sent another Adam, but he has to come as a man. There's no other way. He has to come as a man. So Jesus came in the flesh, died on the cross, and when He died on the cross, all of the sons of Adam, the first creation of men, all died in Him. It's as if God says, you know, this creation of Adam, there's nothing good in His flesh. It's nothing but sin and corruption. So God finished with the old Adam. All of us died in our old man. And then in the resurrection of Christ, there is a brand new man. Can I have a good amen? So whether you feel like it, you don't feel like it, whether you're conscious of it or you're ignorant of it because you're not well taught, you are a brand new man in Christ. And that's the name of our church. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. All things have become new. Amen? Praise the Lord. So worship is nothing more than 
the words that we speak about His Son to Him, to the Father. Worship is reminding the Father of His Son and how wonderful He is. It's the same thing like you do when you look at pictures of your, your son or your daughter when they are not with you. Amen? You love to be reminded. It's not that you do not know how they look. They can be in the same house, but there are times at night when Justin is asleep, Jessica is asleep. I love to see my children. Pass by a picture of Jessica when she was about four years old. And she was so cherubic. And I think to myself, how the years pass. Parents, do you all do that? And you all pause sometimes and think about when the picture was taken. You still find joy. It's not that you don't find joy in them and then you have to find new joy. It's that it's the pleasure of your heart to be reminded. That's why one of the ways to talk to people when you don't know what to talk about and they have children and you have children, is talk about children. And all of a sudden, they come alive. Amen? Normal parents come alive. There are parents who have no sense of responsibility. Right, I'm talking about normal parents. We love to talk about our children, our grandchildren. Amen? We love talking about them. And we can talk for a long time about them. We send pictures to people. We don't really care about our grandchildren, but we want to send them. We want them to care. You understand? Or not? Amen? And we all like that. God loves His Son. So when God told Abraham, take your son, your only son, the son that you love, and offer him on Mount Moriah. You'll never know what anguish, pangs the father's, a father's heart feels. Abraham had a little inkling of that when he brought his son the son that he loved, Isaac, up Mount Moriah. But God spared him, didn't he? But what God did in sparing Abraham of that ultimate thing, the ultimate anguish of a father's heart, God did not spare his. And now we can tell God, now I know that you love me because you did not spare your son, your only son, the son that you love. The apostle of grace says it's like this, He who spared not his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not with him also freely give us all things? Amen? I tell you this, if you meditate on that verse alone, make it your memory verse for this week, and here and there, you know, you start in a jam or whatever. You have moments, just bring up that verse. He that spared not his own son, the best, but gave him up for us all. Who did he give up for? Sinners. How will he not with him also freely give us? How many things? All things. I'm telling you, sometimes even before you pray, the answer comes. Because you are conscious like never before of this wonderful gift of His love. Amen. Come, let us worship and bow down. Stand to your feet. Let us kneel before the Lord our God our Maker. Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our God, our Maker. For He is our God. And we are the people of His pasture, just the sheep of His hand. We are the sheep of.
of his hand. Come, land, form he cares, the other sheep of his hand. Home he provides for, we are the sheep of his hand. The Lord is my shepherd. of His hand, we are the sheep of His hand, we are the sheep of His of the Father, the safe keeping of the Good Shepherd. Mm -hmm. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you are our Good Shepherd who gave your life for us. Lord, these are your sheep, Lord. And we see in your word, Lord, that the good shepherd will always heal the wounded among the sheep. He will always pour in the oil, the power of the Holy Spirit upon the wounds and heal. Lord Jesus, even for those, Lord, that you feel have been stressed out because of parenting situations, Lord, your word says, He shall feed His flock like a shepherd. He shall carry the lambs and guide those that are with young. And you will pour in the oil and the wine even for the parents that are stressed over their situation, Lord, with their daughters or their sons. I thank you, Lord. You are the good shepherd. And Lord Jesus, you know, Lord, the things that some of these wonderful sheep, Lord, that you have blessed so much, Lord. But you know, Lord, some of the things that they have gone through, Lord, maybe this past week, this past month. And Lord, you stand more than ready, Lord, to pour in that oil and the wine and heal and restore. Even in the midst of our symptoms, in the midst of our enemies, I thank you, Lord. You make us to feast at your lavish spread with more than enough. And when you anoint us, Lord, even right now, Lord, our anointing is running over. It's more than enough. And Lord, I'm asking you right now in the name of Jesus, supply your healing, supply what medication cannot do, what surgery cannot remove. Lord, right now in the name of Jesus, supply what nature cannot restore. In the name of Jesus, supply that healing right now, Lord. Supply with more than enough healing for that condition. In the name of Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Lord. Because He's the Good Shepherd, amen. Now, start checking your bodies. I want you to do what you cannot do before. You cannot bend, bend, all right? You cannot move your arm. You cannot move your shoulder. Someone has, a, a, again, a pinched shoulder. There's something pinched near the back, your back, and you know it. You've been told that, all right? I want you to move that shoulder right now. I think you can't move all the way up here, but you can do it now in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Another shoulder condition being healed. Thank you, Lord. Neck conditions being healed right now. Thank you, Lord. Even headaches are leaving people right now in the name of Jesus. 
Amen. You know the Lord is pouring in the oil and the wine. Start doing what you cannot do because when you start doing what you cannot do, you can tell what the Lord has done, what was before and what is now. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise. So start doing what you cannot do before. Thank you, Lord Jesus. All kinds of uh, womb conditions being healed. God is removing fibroid growth. That's the word I receive. Fibroid growth removed in the name of Jesus. Amen. You know, surgery, when they remove it, all right, it's never as perfect as when God removes it. Amen. It will not return in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise God. And uh, also, male conditions, all kinds of conditions. If you have a problem, you're always going to the restroom at night. You wake a lot at night. Amen. Someone being healed of that condition in the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. He created all our reproductive system. Amen. When it's damaged, it needs repair. I just let you know something. Our great physician doesn't repair to the same condition, to a better condition. That's God's kind of restoration. Amen. Someone's neck just got healed again. Praise the Lord. Another person, you can bend all the way like this, but now you can bend. All right. The Lord has healed you. There's oil in your joints now. Praise the Lord. The oil of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. A heart condition involving a valve that doesn't close properly. But now that valve, if you go back to the doctor, the last time I said this, I think was uh, for Pastor Mark over the phone when I saw that happening. 70% of, you know, the valve condition was 70% not working. And the doctor told him to go for surgery. I spoke to him on the phone. And I don't do this always. I just spoke to him just to talk about this. All of a sudden, I saw the Lord gave me this vision. His valve is healed. And I prayed for him, spoke the word. All right? doesn't happen all the time like this with me. But I saw that and I spoke the word. He went back to the doctor. The doctor says, you are healed. You don't have that condition anymore. Amen? So someone just got healed of that condition. Amen? Your valve is healed. Even right now, you feel strength coming back to you. Amen. You've been perpetually tired for the past few days. In fact, months. And uh, you are now strengthened. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. All kinds of ulcers being healed in the mouth. And some of you had that for quite a number of days. Big ones. The Lord has healed you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Uh, stomach conditions. Amen. There's a churning that goes on. You've been having pain also. For these past few days, the Lord is healing you. You feel warmth in your stomach right now. Okay, people, don't wait for me to call out your healing because I'm slow. The Lord is too fast. Okay, He doesn't live in our time zone. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes a revelation He gives me takes me months to preach, to break it down. It's so concentrated. Amen? So same thing for the healing. Just, just search it out. Like the Bible says, you will search out for your enemy and you will find him no more. Amen? If you know the pain is gone, the condition is no more, glorify Him. Okay, do a big wave so that uh, we can hear your testimony. And we hope that our leaders can come to you and uh, share, with, share with all of us what has happened. All those up there, you are not missed out. Okay, just keep on waving, keep on waving. While someone is sharing, keep on waving so we'll save time, okay? And, and I want to spend time sharing the Word with you. Amen? You want to be fat, right? Fat, strong, 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 fat, fat, fat. Amen? Right, so give me time to share the word. So right now, if you know the condition is no more, just do a big wave. Big wave, why? Because we got uh, pastors that are uh, of a certain age. And uh, a big wave help them to see. Okay, is there anyone? Go ahead. Hi, Pastor. We have a brother here who has been having a headache and nausea since last night. Even this morning when he was having breakfast, he felt like puking and he had also some pain in the neck. But after, during the ministering, he felt a sensation come upon him and now, no more pain in his neck, no more headache, no more nausea. Wow, well, praise the Lord. Now that's called, an, that's called overhaul healing. You know, something we got healed, right? He heals things that we don't even talk about, amen? A complete, it's a complete package, amen? Praise the Lord. Okay, somebody else. Hi, Pastor. We have a sister here who had a sore throat since yesterday uh, to the point that she can't speak. But after Wait, the Jude, is that you again? You fly fast, huh? Okay, <laughs> praise the Lord. 
Go ahead. Sore throat, was it? Sore throat since last night, yesterday. And uh, after the ministering, now the pain is gone and she can speak. Praise God. Praise the Lord. What's your name, sister? My name is Mpiwa. Um, I'm from Zimbabwe. I've been... In yeah, Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe. I just want to hear your voice since you can speak. <laughs> okay, neck conditions being healed. If you know you are healed, the pain is no more, the restriction is no more. Don't doubt, the Lord has healed you, okay? Do a big wave. I know there are many people who got healed. Amen. And it's true, what you confess, you possess. Praise the Lord. Amen. You keep it. Go ahead. If there's anyone else up there, those nearest heaven. Amen. Pastor, yeah, circle one here. I have a sister here. She fell last week, hurt her neck. And right now, after you pray, the pain is gone. Oh, wow. You fell down to the ground? I fell down. I fell down at home. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, face down. And I feel a force pushing me uh, backward. So that's how I get the stiff, stiffness. So it was stiff throughout the, this whole week. Yeah, thank God that after the prayer, uh, I'm much better now. I'm, I'm healed now. The Amen. pain is no more? Uh, no more. The okay, so you, no you more. mentioned a force. Yes, you, you... a force. I believe it's the Holy Spirit. Yes, wow, it could be a worse injury, me. huh? Yes, that's Falling right. Because on your face. when I go uh, forward, I feel the door. Wow, I, praise I felt the Lord. door. So the force forced me back. See, the yeah. Lord loves you. He cares Amen. for women's Amen. looks. Amen. You're Thank falling you. on your face especially. Yes. All right, let's have uh, just a few more. Hi, if you, yeah, go ahead. Hi, Pastor. Uh, at the store back, we have a sister here. She worked long hours, so she has knee pain for quite a while, and now she's all well. Knee pain? Knee pain. And uh, how, do you, how do you know you're healed now? Uh, I can start uh, moving, moving left and right. Now I'm okay already. Because no pain. We, uh, no all the pain. pain is gone. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We give you all the praise, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now, we know that uh, for the conditions of the fibroid growth, you have to go back to the doctor and have it confirmed and all that. But for those of you who are healed of all those other conditions, okay, let's, let's hear what the Lord has done. Just a few more, and then uh, we'll proceed to the Word. Amen. Okay, go ahead. So we are at, at store back. And I think there's someone over there as well, okay? We have a lady here. She has neck, neck pain. She's all well now. <laughs> because I was driving, driving range and I was like stiff neck whole morning. Then just now when I prayed. Did I you say firing me. range? Driving range. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I, I kind of like hurt my neck and it couldn't move. So just now when you prayed, the Holy Spirit was just over the neck. And it's, it's loose. Like, it's so loose now. It's and loose. I'm going again later. Wow. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You know, sometimes I wish that yeah, all these things can happen. So I myself, sometimes I have this neck condition. And there's the time that I would give a word. The Lord gave me a word for someone, right? To be, uh, for the healing. And I myself says, Lord, for me. You know? But it didn't happen to me in that service. So it's a gift of the Holy Spirit. Okay? It's got nothing to do with the minister. It's a gift of the Holy Spirit. The minister needs to trust God as well. Amen? So it's God's free gifts. The gifts of working of miracles, the gifts of healings, the gift of faith. is all there in 1 Corinthians 12. Amen? It's for His children. Let's have one last one, okay? One Pastor, last one. Go ahead. There is a precious brother here who go suffered then. for six years neck pain. And just as you prayed, he says that the pain is now completely gone. Wow, praise the Lord. You had it for six years? Yeah, I... Um, injured my neck and I couldn't turn to the left and whenever I turn, I would feel the pain. I've been visiting doctors and chiropractors to ease the pain. But today, um, during the ministry time, I checked my pain and it was no more. Amen. Just like, I look for my enemy and find him no more. By the way, uh, are you Korean? Yes. <laughs> Annyeonghaseyo. <laughs> Annyeonghaseyo. <laughs> Come. Thank the Lord, huh? God bless. Give Him praise. Hallelujah. And then you may be seated. 
Once again, just to remind you that the Lord doesn't stop healing, okay, just because we sit down. You know, He doesn't tell the angels, hey, they sat down already, okay? <laughs> stop pouring the oil of wine, amen? Oil of the Holy Spirit, hallelujah. No, he, in fact, many times when the Word goes forth, God heals, amen? It's God's ordained way, do you know that? That's why when, when you receive a bad report, listen to the Word of God as much as you can. Doesn't have to be my message. It can be any other message that speaks to you, but it must be along the lines of healing, right? It can't be someone who's saying that God doesn't heal today. Don't listen to such stuff, amen. Amen? Like they say, those day of miracles are over. We know there's no such thing as day of miracles. It's always been the God of miracles. Amen. And He's still here, hallelujah. Amen? So listen to messages. Because God's ordained way, in the book of uh, Corinthians, we find that it is said, it has pleased God. It means God is pleased with this method. It has pleased God to save, and the word save there, so so, is also heal, make whole, restore. Amen? Amen. Save, heal, to restore. It has pleased God that by the foolishness of preaching to save, to heal. Now, it doesn't say foolishness of preachers, thank God. <laughs> Amen? Although a few of us can qualify for that. I myself. Okay, so but by, by the foolishness of preaching. Now, you think about preaching. Someone stands down there, he talks. God, God is literally showing us that he talks, he preaches like Paul, right? In the book of uh, Acts. And then someone in Lystra, the city called Lystra. He was lame. He has been lame all this while. But hearing Paul preach, and Paul shouted, stand upright on your feet, and the man jumped up. He was healed. Amen? Now, what did he do? He was listening to Paul preach. Before he was healed, what was he doing? He was listening to Paul preach. So, in someone who, who is like an Athenian, or, or, or a guy from Macedonia, look at the entire thing, and he was thinking to himself, how can something like this happen? He, the foolishness, the guy just talking. No, his talking is not like your people talking. Amen? It's not like your orators or the Greek orators that are famous for making speeches, the Toastmasters. Amen? They talk. Or they might give you things for you to do and apply for success. But you must apply it. You don't apply it, there'll be no success. So it's still contingent on you. But the foolishness of preaching that the Bible talks about by the foolish of preaching is preaching the gospel. And the gospel heals you without your effort, minus your works. It's got nothing to do with you. So when you listen, but there's a way of listening. Jesus taught us this in the parable of the soul, how to get the maximum benefit out of God's word. Amen. He says that in one place, he taught the parable in three gospels. And everyone has a message. And he said this, take heed how you hear. Another gospel, he says, take heed what you hear. You got to make sure that the subject matter is Christ and His finished work. No other place can you find this. You cannot find this on television today. You cannot find it on social media unless it's a, it's a Christian site. And uh, even in uh, the Paris Olympics, they don't want the name of Jesus to be mentioned. Any other name? Okay. But not the name of Jesus. And all the other athletes, you know, all the athletes, even when they give glory to Jesus, even those that won gold, quite a number of them won gold. You watch the interview. They take the name of Jesus out. All right? I, 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 want, I want to thank God and my Lord Jesus Christ for this, you know, and I've been going through it, you know, a time when then they, they, they just keep that one and put it. So the world is not for Christ. If God wants to hear about His Son, it will be from you. Amen. You talk about Jesus. The more you talk about Jesus, the Father is pleased. Amen. Amen. So let's talk about Jesus. The King of Kings is He, the Lord of Lords Supreme. In fact, recently my wife 
uh, showed me also the, a very good presentation on social media about a prayer that's going on. But she, she's very astute. She says that but the only thing is that it's all about God, God, God. The person wants his ministry to be so well accepted, doesn't even mention the name Jesus. Now, I'll tell you one thing. Without Jesus, you cannot receive any of God's blessings. Amen. How do you receive eternal life? How, how, how that you receive forgiveness of sins and this life from God that goes on perpetually? Amen? Death for the believer is like sleep where you transcend from one dimension to another dimension, or from earth to heaven, amen? You're still alive, all right? The body they bury or they cremate, whatever, all right? The body is not the same body, even if you're alive in the rapture, that you will bring with you. You have a brand new body, amen? So the real person is alive. That's why we do not sorrow for our loved ones who have gone to be with the Lord as those who have no hope, because we know the truth. Can I have a good amen? 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 So, what Jesus did has pleased the Father so much. But again, I don't even think that the Father loved Jesus because of the greatest act that He did on that cross on our behalf. Because He loved the Father and He loved us. He laid down His life. And that life became the sin offering for all our sins. Amen? It's all put away. Praise the Lord. We thank God for that because Jesus Himself said, Therefore doth my Father love me because I lay down my life. But that is but a fresh impetus. The Father loved him all the time. Yeah. Amen? Just like uh, my son Justin. Let's say he does something for me in, in a special way. You know? And uh, the, the other day he was saying that uh, for his uh, prelim um, oral exam, English. You know, he, he said that he was a bit nervous at first waiting in the room. But then he remembered, he said, I remembered my father can talk for one hour. <laughs> he said, he said that. That gave him boldness. He said, I am his son. He said that, I am his son. Right? Since my father can do that, I can do that. And he said that he believed he did a good job. You know? So his PSLE is coming. I hope that he's going to do uh, just as well, if not better. But when he shared that with me, I was thrilled. I was thrilled in my heart. Amen? But of course, I didn't tell him then and there that he knew the story, but I didn't want to remind him that I was a stammerer in school. Amen? I was so nervous about talking to a group of people that I would just stutter and stammer and just stand down there. The teacher would say, sit down, sit down. You know? And... I didn't want to remind him of all that, but I was so, so loved and so blessed by hearing my son say that. You know what I'm saying? At that moment, I loved him. Do you understand that? It's not that I don't love him before, but when your son or your granddaughter or grandson does something for you in a special way, you love that person at that moment. Right? So therefore doth my father love me because I lay down my life. The father loved him all the time, but that was the greatest act. By the way, that one act made all of us righteous. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. We do not know the, the anguish that he, Jesus went through on our behalf. Like I shared just a few weeks ago, I, 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 I shared to, uh, about Jesus being the garden of Gethsemane and the the anticipation of him becoming sin with our sins on that cross and his father or God turning his back on his son, forsaking him at the cross because he was carrying our sins, right? The very thought caused him to sweat blood. And medical science says it only happens when your capillaries burst only under extremely, extreme DRS, all right, stress. It happened. It happened before. It's a medical uh, condition. There's a term they use for it. All right? It bursts. And Jesus sweat blood in a garden. But because His blood is redeeming, His blood has no sin in it. And God sent His Son to redeem us with His blood. So when, when the blood fell from Him, mingled with His sweat, the first curse when Adam fell, our forefather, 
but no longer in that we are, are we in Him. We are in Christ now. But the first man, when he sinned, and God says, upon the sweat of your face, you will eat bread. Right? And that tells us straight away, poverty is not a blessing. Because Adam had everything. And by the way, Adam had too much. You say, well, he was the first man one. No choice one. Everything God made, uh, uh, the other creation haven't come forth yet. His descendants haven't come forth. Yeah, but God could have made a smaller one. A smaller earth and fewer trees, fewer fishes, right? God made everything. And then put one man, one woman to enjoy it all. I think a bit too much. <laughs> Jesus was in an environment of wilderness. Nothing was there for him. He fasted 40 days and 40 nights. And the devil tempted him. And he obeyed. Adam, the first man, had everything and disobeyed. How wonderful this son is. No wonder the father loved him. Jesus, even as a boy, amen, at the age of 12, my son's age, Jesus did not have PSLE, but the Bible says he was at the father's house. He, was, he loved to be at the father's house. That tells us, especially when they turn you know, your daughters turn 13 or 12, your sons also. Bring them to the house of God. Make sure they are present in the house of God. Okay? And uh, remember that he, the, he was surrounded by teachers of the law. And the Bible says that at the age of 12, he was asking questions and answering them. You see, it's not pro appropriate for a 12-year-old to be giving the Sermon on the Mount, preaching to these adults, preaching to the Pharisees, preaching to the doctors of the law. It's not appropriate. It's not good taste. So everything Jesus did, his, his glory, even at the age of 12, he did the very thing at the age of 12 that you should do. And that's where the beauty of Jesus even shines. Amen. At the age of 12, we find him asking questions, even though he knew much more than all of them. He should know because he wrote the book. And, and, when they could not answer the questions, you see, they throw back the question, what do you think, young man? And then he would answer. And the Bible says they were astonished at his understanding and answers. Very appropriate for a boy of 12 year old. He's beautiful in his place, in his time. Everything is beautiful, moral glory. We say, be holy for I am holy. Yeah, but do you understand? It takes the leading of the Holy Spirit to have the right morality for that hour, for that moment. I'm not talking about situ situational ethics. Lying is lying. Adultery is adultery. Amen. Murder is murder. Always. I'm talking about the way we manifest the beauty of our character or the beauty of Christ through our character. Amen. It's the fruit of the Spirit. And nothing to do with you. Okay? Amen? Amen. And, and by the way, talking about that, God's, God's, uh, the Father's dream for all His family is that we be conformed to the image of Jesus. Amen. Amen? Amen? We be conformed to the image of Jesus. And you say, well, Jesus is a very nice person. Um, have you read about how He prepared a church and drove the money changers out of the temple? <laughs> we have to be conformed to the image of Jesus. <laughs> Amen? Right? He stood up for those who were oppressed. Amen. He stood up for those who were, who were abused. Amen. They brought a woman caught in adultery and threw her right in front of Jesus. From what I know, if that's adultery, and it's adultery, by the way, if it's adultery, it takes two. Where is the man? It's a, the whole thing is, is a case of abuse and, and not just that jealousy of Jesus and they're trying to catch Jesus. They're not concerned about God's law. They're more concerned that Jesus is found breaking God's law. And of course, we know that He doesn't break God's law at any time. He transcends it. Amen. Amen. For example, the law says you cannot touch or allow anyone who has uh, bleeding that goes on, even internal hemorrhage or a woman, uh, uh, you know, seasonal 
period that goes on beyond. And the Bible says, Leviticus mentioned it. It is sin if she touches anyone. The person is defiled. That woman touched Jesus. And instead of being defiled, she got healed. She got healed. And probably she may be suffering from a fibroid growth that is constantly bleeding, all right, beyond the normal time. And she's ashamed to go out in public. Plus the law says, whoever you touch will become defiled. I'll tell you this. She touched Jesus. He didn't get defiled. You know why? Grace is greater than the law. Amen. Amen? So the Bible says in John 1, and of His fullness we have all received and grace for grace. And of His fullness we have all received. Do we believe that? And of His fullness, another version says, and out of His fullness have we all received. And grace for grace. Grace for grace. You know the Greek word there? Grace for grace is grace anti-grace. Grace anti-grace. Now, figure out <laughs> what does that mean? Grace for grace. Of His fullness we have all received and grace anti-grace. The word anti is not just against. We always think anti means against, right? But anti is also in the place of. Anti is in the place of. You know why the Antichrist is the Antichrist in the Bible? He's trying to imitate Christ. He's trying to provide himself as the Savior of the world. But he is a fake. He is, he is a false prophet, a false messiah. Amen? And that's why he's in the place of Christ. Taking the place of Christ. Many will come in the last days saying, I am Christ. Those are anti-Christ in the place of Christ. Understand? So, grace can be grace in the place of grace. NIV puts it, uh, grace for the grace that has just passed. In place of the grace that has passed. What does that mean? That means, it's God's way of saying, there's never a time in your life, listen to me, that even right now as you're listening to me, and this day, this week, this month, amen, there's never a time grace stops flowing to you. Amen. Another place Paul says like this, God is able, but actually read carefully, is able is future tense in English, but in the Greek there, it's actually God is powering all grace towards you. All favour. What is grace? Undeserved, unearned favour. God is powering all favor towards you. Favor after favor, because grace is unmerited. Grace is favor, but favor from God. Amen. There's favor from men as well, but grace is favor from God. Undeserved favor. Favor after favor. After one favor leaves, another favor comes to take its place. Instead of this favor now, this favor comes. It's God's way of saying continuously. Amen. I like to illustrate it like this from the Sea of Galilee. You see the waves at a time when it was pretty choppy. Can you imagine that this, this sea can actually uh, be stormy? That's why Jesus calmed the storm. Do you see Prophet Elijah <laughs> on the extreme right? That's Pastor Matthews, by the way. All right, that's Pastor Matthews. This is our video that we took when we were there. He's thinking of, shall I comment? <laughs> He's probably thinking, shall I comment? Right? And I missed the point of what I'm trying to tell you all this. So let's show it again. One wave, and another wave, and another wave, and another wave. I believe that God, God, God gives us creation, all right? The world calls it Mother Nature. It's very funny, you know, they don't mind saying Mother Nature, but Father God, wow, a big problem. <laughs> Mother Nature, no problem, you know? Uh, uh, you see, there's mother, there's father, right? Except that God is not married to the creation. He created it. Amen? So, God created creation to illustrate His Son. To illustrate Him. Can I have a good amen? Amen? So these things don't exist just for itself. Or we say, oh, Jesus took examples like a good public speaker from seeds, from ground. No, He created those things for the sermon. And whatever He creates is good for men. Amen. He created the waves. And why must the sea not just be constant? We wouldn't know what, because we come after, 
right? But why is it like wave after wave after wave? God says, if you had hearkened unto me, your peace, your peace shall be like the waves of the sea. Amen. So it's an illustration. Why do you eat meat that are dead? They must be killed. And then after they are killed, they are roast. How they are killed? They are, after they are killed, they are roasted, right? The way they are killed is quite violent. However you, you do it. Because you don't realize, you spare me the violence, I just want to eat my, my burger. Right? So, that meat, after it's killed, it is roasted. Right? Come on. And then it becomes food for you. Have you noticed that? So God ordained that even in that, what is food for our eternal life? Christ crucified. And the fire of God's judgment fell on him. That's supposed to hit your head, hit your family, hit me but because of our sins. But he bore our sins. It's like a laser. The judgment fell on him instead. And now because God is just, God is holy, thrice holy, God cannot punish the same sin twice. He has punished it in the body of the son that he loved. He cannot punish it in your body now. Okay? So God ordained that eating is a way of always reminding us. Whatever it is. Amen. Those of you who like perfume, aromatherapy, those flowers or those... those uh, herbs and those spices, it's when they're crushed, they're crushed, the perfume comes out. Even the flowers, it's when you crush it in your hands, you smell it, the, it gives out its fragrance. Why can something be facing disaster, crushing, destroyed? It gives out its fragrance. Like Jesus, never was He more fragrant to God than when He was suffering on the cross. Amen. Things have to be destroyed to release the benefit for all of us. Actually, everything has a parable. Why is it that the farmer goes to sow the, 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 plow, the, the plowed field, right after it's, it, it, it is plowed, what does he do? He goes and he puts in the seeds. Right? If you study what happened to the seed, when you put the seed in the ground, it's a picture of burial. You understand? Seed by itself doesn't sprout. Seed buried as dead sprouts. That's a picture of resurrection. You're actually eating resurrection every day. You're eating the cross, your picture of the cross, and then the resurrection. All this God ordained that we should understand. Amen. Amen? How long did it take for the tabernacle of Moses to be built? You know how long? Nine months. Nine months. Why nine months? Ladies? Married ladies? Amen. Know you not, your body is a temple of God. Amen. God ordained it that way. You know, our bodies work on a seven-day cycle. Yeah. Even the, the processes that you go through, it's a seven-day cycle. Ladies, you know what I'm talking about? Seven-day cycle. You, your, your child is sick, you bring him to the doctor, the doctor says, uh, oh, it's a virus, Not, nothing much we can do. Uh, usually, uh, you take like seven days or one week to recover. So you ask him, is it one week or seven days? Then he looked at you. <laughs> right? Amen? Some things take double seven to recover. Right? 14 days. They say that every seventh year, your, your cells repair itself, restore itself. Right? Am I right? You're not the same. You're not the same person every seven years. Actually, 
every seven years, if, the, if, if we, we get new cells in our body, then we should be better looking, healthier, stronger, right? But because of the law of sin and death in the world today, that Adam released, every seven years is supposed to be a renewal, right? But it becomes worse. It's like, do you all remember VHS video? I mean, the video, we used to record with that video. You, you put in that video, and you remember when, when, when the machine came out that you could duplicate videos? You're so happy. <laughs> Pastor Henry still does it. <laughs> Where's Pastor Henry, right? You still have the machine? You don't have <laughs> Oh, okay, he's, he's modernized already. Okay, praise God. I'm, I'm feeling kind of sad because I got some good old videos I want someone to do. Little India provides a service still. <laughs> In Little India. You know, anyway, um, when you duplicate the one, the one that you duplicate is never as good as the original. And then when you duplicate another one, the third one is definitely not as good as the original one. The more you duplicate, it gets worse and worse. It's like that, your cell. Not supposed to be like that. It's supposed to be, you know, if, if it's renewed every seven years, it's supposed to get better and better. So every, every seven year of my life, I do something special so that I don't grow old. Yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know. All right? We all are aging. Okay? But can I say every seven years, I believe in this principle? That's why God gave the principle of the seven year is a sabbatical for the land. That's for the land, Pastor Prince. You, my friend, your body is from the land. God made man from the dust of the ground. You're already, finally, uh, whether they bury you or burn you, <laughs> it'll be soil. It'll be the ground. Dust thou art, and dust thou shalt return. The difference is that for the believer, we are born again. So death for us is a graduation. Amen? to a place where you can never be unhappy, never be stressed, never grow old, forever young, forever strong, forever healthy, forever! And have a body at that. Not floating around. You have a body. Are you enjoying this so far? Would you like me to share with you what the Lord shared with me every seven years? Are you on the seventh year cycle? Like if you are... 21 years old is a, is a seven-year cycle. You're on the third, right? Third seven. Some of you advanced already. You're like the book of Daniel, 70, 70th week already. <laughs> Amen? Well, if the dust is not rested every seven years, you see what happens to the dust? Huh? When I talk about rest, you all think, of, oh, go somewhere else, rest and all that. Rest starts with the spirit and then your soul. Because you can be in Hawaii, you can be in Japan, you can be in uh, Austria, beautiful places, but inside you're not at rest. You are in an uh, environment of rest, but if you cannot rest, your mind is um, uh, overworked, amen? You cannot sleep at night, and you are busy scolding your children while you're on holiday, all right? You are busy reminding them why you are there to enjoy the holidays. You are scolding them so that they can enjoy the holiday with you in your misery. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> I am not going to be miserable alone. Everybody's going to join me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so that's why rest must start from inside. And thank God we have rest already. Rest of conscience, amen, that Jesus has given us. But there's another rest God wants to give you, which is the rest of the soul. Amen. So Jesus says, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden. The word heavy laden there is really a weight, a burden that is oppressive. You look it up. And not just that, the word laden is right there. How much more heavy laden? And these people that he spoke to, they were under the law. Amen. They were laboring to be accepted by God. Amen. Not just that, they are, they, are, they are laboring for the sustenance of their family, trying to make a living. It's the same story today. Except a lot of people today, 
may not know that their first burden that they feel is actually a conscience that's not at rest. So Jesus died on the cross for, for that purpose, first and foremost, to give you rest in your conscience, knowing that your, all your sins are forgiven. Yeah. Amen. There's no more sin consciousness. Yeah. Praise God. So he says, come unto me, come unto what? Not to a formula, to a body of principles, to the Ten Commandments, amen. Come to a, the Christian religion. No, he didn't, he didn't come to give us a religion. He came to give us life and life more abundantly. He says, I am come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. And you know that people with billions of dollars may not have life more abundant. You see them suffering. I just heard one guy sharing about the sorrow in his family. Doesn't guarantee joy, peace. Huh? He's come unto me, to Jesus. All you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. So that, that's the rest. It's the rest that's given. I will give you rest. Give you rest. Am I right? Yep. All right. So we have that. That's the rest of the conscience. When he appeared to his disciples after the resurrection, after the accomplished work of redemption at the cross, he rose again from the dead and he showed them his hands, his sight. What do you say? Peace. Now you got the receipt of peace. You got the receipt. My wounds are the receipt. The divine receipt that God accepts my sacrifice on your behalf. I didn't go to the cross for my own. I have no sins. I went to the cross for you. I went to the cross for you. I went to the cross for you. Amen. These are the divine receipts. You are forever forgiven. All your sins are put away. Amen. God will never bring up your sins against you to punish you ever again. Can I have a good amen? amen. Now live for Him. Live for the one who loved you so much. Live for His glory. Amen. amen. Your, your, your destiny is not temporal. It's not just earthly. It is eternal. Amen. Heavenly. Live, live in heaven, amen. Don't listen to the saying, you know, so heavenly minded, no earthly good. Be heavenly minded so that you can be earthly good while you're still here, yeah. amen. So that's the, the rest we have. Our sins are forgiven, amen. We are not trying to get forgiveness, trying to get forgiveness always. No, we are forgiven of our sins. When we take communion, it is a thanksgiving that we are all forgiven through the blood, which is the main clause of the new covenant. Their sins I will remember no more. Then Jesus says, I'll give you rest. And then he says what? Take my yoke upon you. Right? Take my yoke upon you. Now the yoke is what in those days would pass off like a, 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 a pillar of wood that they put on the shoulders of two ox, two oxen, okay? That's the yoke. He says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I'm meek and lowly, watch this, and you will find rest. So that yes, I will give rest, and here you will find rest. Two rests are mentioned here. So most Christians understand the first rest. All right, I'll give you rest. But they don't understand the other rest. That must be found. 